All right, well, welcome to the Geocaching 101 tutorial. So let's learn how to geocache, shall we? Geocaching is a high-tech scavenger hunt. Okay, within the scavenger hunt, you're going to look for little items that are hidden around the world. So geocaching was actually invented way back in 2000, the year 2000. I know that's a long time ago for some of us and not so long for some of you. So what is geocaching? So geocaching is a real-world outdoor treasure hunt where again, um, small packages or large packages are actually hidden around your community, in fact. So how is the game played? So you can play one of two ways. Really all you need to do is you can hide your own geocache, find the longitude and latitude, the, the global positioning system where it is actually located, and go find one. You could hide one and, and find one yourself. But if you want to be a fit, an official geocacher, okay, you can register at geocaching.com and then you would follow these steps um, to go ahead and register and get yourself an account to be uh, to go ahead and look for official geocaches that are, that are actually documented on this website. So what are the rules of geocaching? If you take something from a geocache or a cache, leave something of equal or greater value. Okay, that's really important. Don't forget to write about your findings in the geocache logbook, okay? And a logbook is something that you would um, log on, maybe something like your your phone or the app that you use to find it or even go to www.geocaching.com to again record your experience. So where are geocaches located? Geocaches again are found everywhere and anywhere. Okay, You could have one next door outside on the, cor uh, the corner of your community or you could go all the way to you know um, I don't know Santiago Chile to find one. Okay, I'm sure there's one there. Okay, but they're all over the world. In fact, there's over 2 million geocaches around the world and growing. So what types do we have? There are many types of geocaches, but the most popular are traditional geocaches. Well, you'll find a little item, uh, again, a geocache, and inside of that geocache, you'll find a logbook. Now, that's a traditional geocache, where they also might have some uh, small little items that you can actually take, and we talked about that a little bit ago. Okay? But another type would be a mystery or puzzle geocache. That would take you from one geocache, solve a puzzle, to potentially one other geocache to actually sign the logbook and say that you've actually solved the puzzle. Related to a mystery or puzzle geocache would be a multi-geocache. Multi-geocaches work pretty much the same way. You go from one geocache, okay, get the coordinates and it's gonna send you off on the hunt for another geocache. And those are called multi-geocaches. So you can see how similar a mystery puzzle geocache might be to a multi-geocache. Okay. So what does a geocache look like? So there's like, there's like totally four different um, geocaches. There's micros, which are about a film canister or smaller. Okay. Um, small geocache, which is about the size of a sandwich bag or container. You can have a regular geocache, which is about the size of a shoebox. And then finally, a large geocache, which would be a large bucket or bigger. Okay, we're going to take a moment and watch this video that actually shows you. It's a little 30-second video that shows you kind of different types of geocaches. So what's usually in a geocache? Now, geocaches can have lots of things in it, but again, the main thing that you're gonna find is a log sheet, okay, or a log book, where you put your the date that you arrived at the geocache and your either game tag or geocache name or your name, okay? Um, the items truly turn into an adventure, and I think you'll find this very fun, and you can actually um, exercise with purpose, you know, have long walks and look for geocaches. So what do you need to actually geocache? You basically need um, a GPS system, something that has GPS on it. So either you're looking for longitude and latitude, um, or you have a, so you can have an app such as on a phone, a mobile phone, any phone works fine as long as it has data going to it. 
Um, or you can use a global positioning system or a GPS tracker, which actually just tracks the satellites and uses the satellites to track longitude and latitude. Okay, and then registering would be good at geocaching.com so you can actually access some of these geocaches that are out in the world. So how do you find a geocache? Again, use your GPS device, find the geocaches on the website from geocaching.com, and again, use your GPS tracker or mobile device to search for it. So, what do you do when you find one? Okay, so let's say I found my geocache, right? And I open it up, and we know that at minimum, test, 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 yes, there should be a log book inside, right? So I pull out the log book, I sign it, okay? And I put the date that I arrived there. And maybe I take my, a little selfie of me finding it. Again, never take a picture of where the location is. That's kind of off limits because we want to keep the geocaches um, findable and safe for everybody who are searching for them. It's no fun when somebody just tells you where it's at. Um, you also should, um, if you take an item from the geocache, remember to replace it with something of equal or greater value. Okay, so you can take stuff from these um, geocaches, but remember to keep that in mind when you go geocaching. Uh, place the geocache back exactly where you found it. If it had leaves on it, if it had some bark on it, make sure you try to get that, that same um, idea that the, the person who hit it there, they want it somewhat hidden, they don't want it buried, but again, place it back the same way you found it. That would be really important. And don't forget to log your experiences. Again, go to geocaching.com, type in or write exactly what you found. Great geocache, was hard to find, but I found it, it was my second try, things of that nature. Just give them a little summary of what, uh, what you thought of the geocache and the experience. And then finally, when I'm actually looking for geocaches, we have to look out for mumbles. So if I actually find a geocache, and I see a muggle, a person that's not really looking for geocaches, you're like, don't let them know what you're doing. If they ask, um, let them maybe know what geocaching's about, but at the same time, you shouldn't be just like, here it is, check this out, I found it. Celebrate it, but celebrate it internally and on those logs, okay? Make sure you keep this as safe and as private as possible for the geocaching community only. Okay, so watch out for those muggles, okay? They're, they're everywhere. So you got to kind of be slick about it, okay? So um, sometimes it's good, a, a tip is to grab the geocache, walk away to a private area, go ahead and sign the logbook, and then go back and replace the geocache where you found it, okay? Are you guys ready to go geocache? Let's do it! Yeah! Woo! Yeah, that was good, that was good. So, bonus mission. So the bonus mission here is for you to go to geocaching.com, okay? Click play, click on the hide seek cache button, and go ahead and fill out the form and learn how to actually plant your own geocache so you can really be part of the community, not just a seeker, but an owner of your own geocache. Here's a short video on the types of geocaches that can be placed out, out in the world and how you would do that and then you would fill out the form and it explains how to go about this. This is a mission for you if you choose to accept it. Go geocache. Woo! The first step to hide any geocache is to make sure that you're ready. I'm good to go. Let's hide this thing. Boom! Hidden! Slow down there, champ. Hiding a geocache takes time and commitment so that geocachers can find it for years to come. A good way to gain experience is by finding more geocaches. Finding about 100 geocaches before your first hide will help you figure out what you like and don't like and gather some great ideas. Woo! I know so much more now. What's next? Next up, let's find a spot that's right for your geocache. What about right here? This spot looks pretty cool. Apparently, you're not the only one who had that idea. Geocaches have to be at least a tenth of a mile away and in a place where geocaches are allowed. How about this tree nook? It's safe, easily accessible, and perfect for a geocache. It looks like a great spot, but your container is a little lacking. What we have here are a few examples of great geocache containers. 
Whatever you choose should be durable, waterproof, and well labeled. Add a logbook and you're good to go. Hmm, decisions, decisions. After you make your pick, we'll go hide it. When placing your geocache, make sure you get accurate coordinates, take note of the difficulty and terrain ratings, and remember your geocache's size. Then, you're ready to plug it all in on geocaching.com. All right, I put in all the info and wrote a pretty sweet description. And don't forget to add a helpful hint. Got it. Now what? Now you send it in for review. Review? By who? Hi. A community volunteer. Someone like me. We'll take a look at your geocache's details and see if it fits within the guidelines. And if everything looks good, it will be published. Awesome. Thanks. Then what? Then it's just keeping your geocache in tip-top shape and enjoying all of the geocaching love that rolls in. There's plenty more to learn about hiding a geocache. Just click the link to learn more. And if you want to find the geocache that I just hid, here's the GC code. 